Hi there, it's Enzo Barbie here from Motors Medical Devices. I'm the product manager for MR Guided Radiation Therapy QA Devices. And we are at the floor of ISMRM 2015 in lovely Toronto, Ontario, opening day. And uh, I'm going to be describing some of our uh, MR devices that are used in the QA guides. And over here, uh, you can see a nice snapshot of our MRID geometric distortion fit. Now, uh, some of the salient features that distinguish this particular phantom from traditional grid phantoms are, uh, number one, it's a fairly light uh, device and it's hollow. Uh, what we do have is uh, on the boundary, on the surface of the cylinder, and on the end plates, a number of control points. Uh, and this, these control points are used to actually calculate a boundary distortion uh, vector field. And we're actually using the same math that the OEMs are using for their gradient coil designs. Uh, it's based on spherical harmonics, and it's based on the premise that if you know what's going on on the boundary, you know what's going on in the internal volume, and vice versa. So what we can do is we can eliminate material throughout the central volume of the phantom, which results in uh, a very lightweight MRID distortion phantom. Another very important salient feature about this is it comes with turnkey software that has a control point finder. It's fairly refined and robust and has been tested on 1.5T and 3T on all the major OEM vendors. Now what this means is that the robustness of this control point finder uh, is that we can actually scan um, 3D volumes in fairly short periods of time. So typically at 1.5T we're doing a T1 weighted 1 millimeter isotropic scan in about 10 minutes and in about 5 minutes on a 3T system. So not only is the Phantom fairly lightweight, uh, the scan times are, are relatively short, particularly with respect to what you would expect from a grid Phantom. So uh, what we're going to do now is uh, take a brief look at some of the software features that are associated uh, with the Phantom. And now how this works is you would place the Phantom in a magnet. You would acquire, uh, as I said, a 3D T1 weighted isotropic uh, scan that encompasses the entire volume of the Phantom. And then you would get the DICOM data set and we would, uh, we would import that data set. And there's an import feature that's, uh, that's on the software that helps uh, direct the required DICOM uh, data to the folder that's required. And then once the data is placed in the folder, uh, you would hit uh, an MRID processing feature which processes the data. And on typical systems with relatively uh, powerful processors, it's about a one minute uh, processing time. Once the data is processed, we have several ways of displaying and analyzing the data. Some of them are traditional uh, and have been noted in the publications and literature for typical uh, plots that are shown uh, along X, Y, and Z distortions for, for example, um, cumulative plots of distortion. Uh, we also have histograms, which are also uh, well-accepted uh, metric means of displaying data. And uh, a third proprietary to, uh, to MODIS is a, an axial slicer, which allows us to look at the three main components of distortion along Z. Uh, and what you'll notice is when I hover the mouse over what is essentially the average or mean distortion at a particular point on Z, we get an axial plot that pops out along X and Y, and it allows us to probe in a 2D fashion the exact distortion values on a slice per slice basis. So this is a fairly effective and powerful method of characterizing the 3D distortion in a 2D format. And of course, uh, computers lend themselves to these types of formats, which are not typically uh, accessible online in online publications. So this is a very interesting technique that we can use to visualize distortion, uh, 3D distortion in 2D. Uh, there's another very powerful feature, which I think is uh, also worth highlighting here. Now we have a calculator function which allows us to perform a, a unique calculation um, with uh, the MRID software. If uh, the end user acquires two identical data sets uh, on an MR scanner and changes the frequency and code direction from positive to negative, one can perform some calculations to separate out, separate out the, um, the B0 and the gradient distortions uh, separately. And they can be plotted separately on a slice by slice basis. So I'm just going to scroll from left to right here. And this is a uh, different slices along said. 
a cross section of the distortion. So what I'm highlighting right now is the B naught homogeneity. And I can flip over to the gradients. So now what we're looking at is the gradient induced nonlinearity distortion. So we can actually tease out and characterize uh, how these change with different parameters and different systems. So um, among the many different features that are of utility to end users is the ability to compare your MR scanner over time. You can compare the sites, you can compare um, uh, in trending analysis. Uh, we also have uh, automated reporting. So you can actually issue um, automated reports that export all of the metrics uh, for daily QA, weekly QA, or monthly QA. One can also export data in um, CSV limited format uh, in an Excel spreadsheet so that you can have access to all of the X, Y, Z coordinates and the distortion vectors along X, Y, and Z. We also have a fairly powerful uh, 3D viewer which uh, has a, a number of features which allow you to visualize the entire distortion vector field in 3D. Uh, you can see immediately a color map which is rendered on the surface of the phantom which directly shows you the boundary distortion vector field upon which we calculate the internal distortion vector field using the method that is based on spherical harmonic analysis. So we can zoom in and look and we can see that the control point finder has identified the control point here, for example, and that is uh, compared to the relative truth that comes from our CAD data, and with that we can calculate the distortion vector field. So, I think we've covered off some of the main features here. Uh, we can also show the direct plot of the phantom surface. And I'll just zoom out here. We can actually show the three planes. We can navigate through the phantom. And we've got DICOM, typical DICOM viewer plots to the right here that show the cross-section of the phantom for reference. And there are other several features which one can select. I'll just power down here and launch the 3D viewer here. Uh, we do have menus that allow you to customize what you're looking at and define a particular region of interest if you want to zoom in on small subsets of distortion that are not necessarily uh, encompassed by the entire phantom. For example, let's say you wanted to look at a sphere. So one can um, zoom in and define a region of interest, either a sphere or a cube. So we've got a radius that we can define of, let's say, 100 millimeters, which would be a 20 milliliter, uh, 200 millimeter sphere. So it might be difficult to see with a camera, but we'll zoom in. So what we're looking at here now is a sphere of 200 millimeters. And what we've done is we've excluded all the distortion vectors outside of that field of view, and we're just hovering in on that region of interest. And as, as we can see, those distortion vectors are relatively small, so our, the OEMs have done a fairly good job of rendering the distortion levels in a 20 centimeter or 200 millimeter spherical volume to small and somewhat acceptable levels. Uh, we are adding several other features uh, when we are going to be releasing the software that add some of these features. It has been an interesting uh, ongoing process of refinement based on some collaborator input from a number of different uh, early adapters worldwide and uh, a lot of these exciting new features are uh, being designed into the system and software uh, as we speak. So we'll have more information coming up at uh, upcoming conferences which include World Congress, MRNRT, AEPM and Astro. So look forward to updates then. Thanks very much.